coming at you live from separate places in the universe. This is the Blue Heaven pregame. This is NLDS uh, DS pregame. Man, 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 man. Like, I still don't have the board. Uh, that guy over there, uh, wait, over there is Brooke, and he's getting a little blurry. I am Clint, and I look crisp. We got new comments, uh, new fancy looking comments on the screen. What's going on, man? How are you doing today? Long time no see. Yeah, I'm good. I feel like I uh, haven't seen you in an entire day, so uh, feeling good about that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm losing you on the phone side, but I'm pretty sure you sound great on the stream side. Let's dig into the comments right away. Uh, what are you seeing on the comments? My my friend, my pal, my buddy, oh, whatever. Yeah, that was good. Uh, we got a couple people in here already. Everybody really excited. We got Hatfield in, as always. Calls us gentlemen. Hatfield, good to see you. Always good to see you. Sorry if I'm blurry, guys. Uh, the internet is uh, at full capacity over here, apparently. Uh, Gerardo over on Facebook says, let's go Dodgers. A lot of let's go Dodgers in the chat. I think guys are uh, pretty excited for tonight's game. Is there something important going on tonight? I, th no, I, don't know. I think so. I think it's one of them baseball sports matches. Yeah, it's one of those things. We got Mookie Betts. <laughs> in the flesh on YouTube saying what's up to us. Always a pleasure to see the, the Mookie YouTube channel in here. <laughs> we got our homegirl, our friend Sierra in the stream saying, woo, let's do this. Little pre-game in over here. Uh, we got somebody, Howard Smith wants us to subscribe to him. I don't know if we can do that. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. But Howard Smith on Periscope on the, uh, on the stream here. Jonathan over on Facebook. Stay classy, San Diego. I like the I like the shameless plugs in the. Uh, in I think the we're gonna be. Uh, I think we're gonna have less fights with San Diego, because uh, everybody's more, especially me. Everybody's more upset with the Astros playing at Dodger Stadium and winning, which is awful. It it is uh, very very uncomfortable the fact that they are playing at our stadium and actually doing very well at our stadium. I hate it a lot. Don't like it. Thank you, Rob Manfred, for ruining my year once again. You're really good at it. <laughs> Uh, Katie says, y'all ready to fight the person who runs the Fox Sports MLB Twitter? Did you see that? I did. Not a fan. Don't like Somebody it. Somebody changed uh, Welcome to Dodger Stadium, the sign in front of Dodger Stadium, to Welcome to what, Springer Stadium. And that ain't it. That ain't it, dog. That's a big no uh, from Yeesh. this guy right here. This guy with the thumb right here. Uh, a few more comments. Swag, Swag Daddy McGee wants me to get the board. Uh, I have another soundboard here, like to make myself sound better. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. FRG just gave me this, so at least I have a bell. Uh, I guess that's a that's an upgrade. We're getting there slowly. I don't think she can pull a uh, a, a reggaeton horn out of her ass. So we'll 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 get there eventually. I'll, I'll plug in another board and we'll start going from there. Uh, let's see. Ek asks if Bueller goes six. Are we good? I think we'd be great. If Bueller goes six. I would six. be very, very happy if Bueller went six innings. I'd I'm also very be, happy. I think I'd also be kind of scared if he went six, though. Yeah, I imagine if he goes six innings, that, uh, that blister's not going to look very good after yeah. six innings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matthew says the bell means drink. And the worst part is I don't have any beer here at the house. I have some, like, knockoff beer, but then I forgot to grab that before I sat down. So it is what it is. Uh, you know how they go. You know how we say it. Uh, our our friend Tati's in the stream right now. Let us kiss the swag daddy. Swag, swag daddy McGee says Springer is a cup. Pretty good. Pretty good. Plus points. Got to stick around for the whole show. Oh, that's very fancy. Ooh, thank you. There was a magic. I don't know if I want to call this uh, a beer, but I got this at least. You got something. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a game tonight. Let's dive into it. We got the game tonight. What what start time? Six thirty eight tonight. Six thirty eight. Randomly pushed back a little more than the other games. You get it on six thirty eight Pacific time. It's on FS one. We get our friend of the show and friend of all of us, Mr. Joe Davis, on the call. Of course, you got John Smoltz on there as a color man, which is not the best combination, but we get what we get, and we won't throw a fit. I know that Padres fans in particular are kind of upset that Joe Davis is on the call, though. That's an interesting, uh, interesting choice there. I, I guess I don't know. Yeah. I'm happy about it. I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's our guy, so I would understand why you wouldn't want to complain about that. But um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how uh, how they find a way to fluff and mix in. John Smoltz's career into every uh, every step of the broadcast, like uh, oh, he'll find a way. Yeah. To, he'll find a way to let you know what he's done. 
He it's will gonna, let you know. It's going to be a bunch of Joe saying, so John, what did you do in this situation in your Hall of Fame career? That was uh, that was not a very good Joe Davis. I usually do a bit better Davis, but... Um, yeah, I don't know who that was. That was, that was just you talking weird. Because <laughs> you need to have something that ends with like that, that K-pop. So it would be like, Adam Kalerik. You know, and then that's that's the best Joe I can get. But all right, yeah, sure. Whatever but, you say, man. We got we got some roster changes. All right, we roster. got some stuff that we got to go through. The Dropping game's coming it. up relatively soon. Yes. But we do have some pretty. I don't. Do you want to call them significant changes? Can we call them significant changes? I don't know. They're, yes? they're semi-significant. They're, they were somewhat shocking. Uh, finding out later on in the day. So I have the graphic up on the screen. As as y'all can see now, um, the big moves. Dylan Floro is in, which is something we knew, something we talked about yesterday on the full show. Uh, the big shockers, oh, we also you know, weren't 100% sure. It seemed like they were going to have less need for, for uh, Kbert Ruiz, so he's off the roster. But the big one, Eddie Rios is off, and Gavin Lux is on. As that happened, everybody lost their mind on Twitter. Uh, you know, I, I found a way to kind of you know, sort of explained it. It made sense to me. Like you were talking about, uh, you know, I think previewing the last series about how bad um, Pollock is in the outfield. Well, it's a very spacious outfield over there at right. uh, at Globe Life Field. So for those who don't know, Eddie Rios hurt himself. He, he, uh, he pulled upon his groin, and uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> He, uh, I guess he was doing some fielding drills on Sunday, and it was yanked good enough. His groin was yanked good enough to not be able to play this series, so they, they, they took him off. Gavin Lux is on there. I was kind of surprised, though, to see when we do get the lineup a little bit that uh, Pollock's still in left. I would have thought maybe go Taylor, give Lux a, ch- a shot. But uh, where were you at? Uh, where are you at, at least with the reasoning and all that? Where, where is your heart without uh, Eddie Rios in the lineup? Uh, unfortunately, I just said last night that I thought that he was going to have a big series if he got a chance to be in there. So that's kind of bad timing. Yeah. But that also matches up with everything I've ever said in my entire life. So it works out. Um, was unfortunate that he wasn't able to be on there. Avi can't be on there, and it's understandable. I get it. Also, I was very much surprised that they started Jock at DH today. But it just, I don't know, to me... It has all the makings of a really good game for Jock, and I just feel it in my bones that he's going to have a good game tonight. I just really want him to have a good game, and that might be more it. Um, but this matchup with uh, Clevenger, I think it's going to be really good. I do think that the Padres will play it so that when his turn comes up in the lineup in a very specific spot, that a left-hander will come in, and Jock will be out of the game really quick. So he might only get one at bat. He might get more than one at bat, but he might only get one at bat tonight. So it just really depends. I think... When Dave was building this lineup, you look at it, and it's righty-lefty, righty-lefty. He's really planning for the early exit of Mike Clevenger from the game, which is a real possibility given the uncertainty of him even being in the series at all. Yeah. He could come come in and make a really short outing, and the, and the Padres go to their bullpen quickly. Um, and if that's the case, you're pretty protected from that lefty and lefty matchup that the Padres want to take advantage of. Yeah, we we saw Clevenger on. Uh, Denelson Lamette did not make it, so they only got half of their dynamic duo back. They added a couple more arms. Uh, this is really going to be, if we kind of look into game one here, uh, the starters. This is going to be a battle of a couple of starters that might not be able to go the distance or even five innings. Uh, I, I feel more confident about Walker to get somewhere in the game than, than Clevenger because Clevenger has all of, what, um, I, I think one outing in the last two, three weeks or something like that. He was pulled early, pulled, what, after like one pitch or, or, or one inning. One he, inning. He came one off. Inning. Yeah, so it, <laughs> this is probably something for them to set up. Plus, you know, he threw an aggressive, as I call it, an aggressive uh, bullpen on Sunday. So maybe they look at – Three three innings for him. Go to the bullpen and then potentially have him on short rest for game five. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of different ways uh, to look at this. Bueller, they keep talking about the blister. He keeps saying that don't worry about the blister. Dave again today said you know the the training staff will be monitoring it. They they're really looking at that blister as uh, like it, it. The more he throws, obviously in this game the. The more recency with that blister, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be ideal for it. But 
uh, the longer he's in the game, then you might not have a quality blister, uh, a Bueller blister in, uh, you know, in the World Series or beyond this series, whatever it may be, if we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So it's a weird balance right now for Dave and the Dodgers and the training staff. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, it sounds like the way Dave described it, he's not even going to be involved in the blister process throughout the game, which is almost to me like, a, I don't want to see it. I don't want to know about it. Just let me know if he can go or if he can't go. If you need to stop him, stop him. He can go back out there, throw him back out there. But it sounds like he's going to be out there as long as he's effective mm-hmm. and as long as he's feeling good and as long as his finger's not going to fall off and <laughs> compromise him for maybe his next start. But I think the good news is in this first game, <laughs> if you have to pull Walker early, which Dave very well might pull him pretty early, gives you the option of not only piggybacking him with another starter like Dustin May or if you want to go Julio again, probably not Julio because you probably want him for a start mm-hmm. later, but you never know what they're going to go with. Also gives you the option of if you need to go to a game five, then you have Walker Buehler available again on four days rest. You yeah. feel pretty good about that. You feel confident about that. I wouldn't, if I were the Padres, and I'm not, obviously, I would not go Clevenger game one and then game five, given the fact that he's injured already, mm-hmm. um, or at least coming back from an injury. So I think in that sense, we have a little bit of an upper hand on that, but it remains to be seen. We'll have to see how far Walker can get into this one. Yep. I, I don't remember who said if we can give a six, that would be great. But if he could give a six innings tonight, that would be yeah. the best case scenario. I don't think you're going to get any no. better. I, I, I think it's going to be a lot like game one from the, the wild card. If you can get, if you can get three innings out of him, uh, four innings out of him, you're going to have a really good spot. You'll probably have, like you already said, D may to be the guy to come in behind him, kind of clean up, uh, you know, close the door a little bit or clean up maybe three, be that bulk guy uh, to get three innings and find a way to the back end of the bullpen, which might not be Kenley Jansen guaranteed. That's another thing they've talked about. We talked about it yesterday on, on uh, the full Blue Heaven podcast. Check it out. But, um, you know, Kenley is uh, apparently accepting of the fact that he might not be closing every game. So that's a good thing. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm just all in for the guys who want to win. Like, I don't want the guys who are in this for themselves, for their own glory, for their own pride. I don't care about those guys. Got no place for those guys. I just want to win a freaking championship, man. I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> I'm tired of this. Oh, boo hoo! I've never had yeah. a championship since the last time I wasn't even alive then. Yeah, Damn, oh, kids. the only thing I have is my Lakers championships and my Kings championships. <laughs> And then my one Saints championship. That's really off the wall wild. So let's uh, let's dig into a few of the comments. And guys, go ahead and give us your your series predictions, your your MVPs, whatever. We want to get to those before the end of the show because we'll we're probably going to have a hard stop at, at six o'clock. So we got about fifteen minutes until then because Brooks got to leave the office. I'm home so I can stay and watch the Lakers real easy, and I also don't have to drive all the way to the office and waste a bunch of gas because gas is beer money, as we like to say. Uh, Mookie bets in yeah. the stream. Has has a <laughs> he has a great uh, idea here. Also, it's a terrible mm-hmm. idea here. It says I'm going to take a shot of tequila every time Smoltz talks about himself. <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll call the ambulance for you because you're going to need it. Uh, Mookie, you're Josh leading off tonight. Likes to talk about himself. Yeah, um, at least we didn't get like uh, AJ Krasinski and John Smoltz on a call together. That's that's all I'm thankful for right now. Yeah, uh, we got King Yellowman saying, I'm pulling up my groin right now. Hey, I'll ding to that. Okay. okay. Uh, Matthew appreciates our pregame show. He says, we're much better than that Yankee biased John Boy. Um, I think that's a compliment these days. Yeah, I actually uh, I didn't notice until today when John Boy came out with a couple different Yankees videos that he is very much all in on his fandom. But, you know, I don't think he ever claimed to not be, to be fair. So. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, let's see. We, a few more of the comments here. Dodger D said, playoff Jock will be back. So, I mean, we've talked a little bit about Jock, and you've already said it. So you, digging into it a little bit more, you, you really think, or are you just being hopeful that uh, – are you trying to be posi- like positive me when I just say things and hope that I will it into the ethos that, like, Kenley will be good or Jock will have a good game? <laughs> are you really feeling it? I just feel like he has to have a good game. It- Playoff jock is a different animal. I know we talk about it all the time that the playoffs are an entirely different season. And if he's able to put his bad season behind him and accept today that he, 
Doc has the confidence in him to give him a game one start as the designated hitter in a lineup that features a lot of really good bats. Mm -hmm. He's got to feel pretty good about himself. And I think he needed that vote of confidence, and I think it's going to go over well. I think when you're looking at the matchup <clears throat> between Clevenger and, G and Jock, obviously Clevenger has that good fastball that sits around 95 that plays up to Jock. Clev also doesn't live up in the zone too often, which historically Jock has done really well with, but this year has not done very well with, so remains to be seen on that. But Clevenger also has that really good slider that he goes to about 35% of the time. So, I mean, it could really go either way. I'm just really feeling it's in Jock's favor tonight, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a really good Jock game. It would just make me feel really good inside, you know? Yeah, that's also very noble of you. Let's go ahead and uh, throw the lineup mm -hmm. on the board here. So we got the top of the order is pretty much the same. Mookie leading off. We got Seager, JT, Muncie remaining in that cleanup spot, which uh, Dave said that he liked that he took good swings. He didn't make contact with those swings, but he took good swings in the last series. Uh, that's another one of the things. One of our guys, uh, our writer, Tim Rogers, SD Dodger Tim, over on DodgersNation.com. If I had a graphic, I'd put it on the screen. It says DodgersNation.com slash live. Perfect. Go there, click around, find Tim's article about why Max shouldn't be in that cleanup spot anymore. We talked about it last night. Max had his best stretch of the season when he was batting fifth or lower. He had about a 10-game 10, 10 stretch. He batted, uh, he, he OPSed over 1,000. But uh, Will Smith still in there in that five spot. Didn't have a great series. Cody, who's my pick to click, by the way, for this game. I think Cody has something of a breakout. Probably drops two hits and, and a double. Pollock in left, which I know you're going to be uh, a little worried about. And then Peterson DH and, and CT3 at the bottom of that lineup there, which is a, a, a really a really good look you want to see having that secondary le uh, leadoff guy. But given no Rios, where are you at on this lineup? Um, I think a very underrated move in this lineup is that it gives you room to get ahead offensively. And then in the later innings, you can sub out Pollock and move people around. Depending on who you want to move around, you can move Chris Taylor to the outfield if you need to. You can bring on Terrence Gore as an outfield replacement. Obviously, his speed plays up in the outfield, and his speed really plays up in this big-ass outfield. Oh, yeah. Um, you can move guys to second. You can bring Gavin Lux into play second, move CT to. I, I just like the flexibility that this lineup gives you overall. Um, it, it has a lot of... It leaves a lot of people on the bench that you can use in the later innings if you need to pinch hit or if you need mm -hmm. defensive substitutions. I really like it. But I will say that the only question that I have, it's just that Max Muncy in the four spot still. I just, I, for the last couple of weeks, I haven't gotten why Doc keeps going back to that and why he keeps leaning on that so heavily. Um, I guess, you know, he sees more than we do. <laughs> he obviously sees him more and talks to him more and hears from him more and hears from coaches more. So there must be something that he's seeing that he thinks Max is really close to finding it. But, I mean, when we look at his at-bats, I don't see anything that screams to me that he's going to have a breakout game or he's going to have a breakout series. But, you know, I'll probably be eating my words like three games from now. Hey, we, we are all about that. We are happy to eat our words anytime we can. Uh, hopefully we got our guy. Our uh, the, So we're the pregame. You have a postgame show at, right after the game, DN postgame with your host, Doug McCain, and hopefully he's watching so he can call us out on stupid things we say because that's always nice. We're, we're about that. We're, we're, we, will, we will fall on the sword for our Dodgers to uh, hopefully help them win. Digging into the comments a little bit here. Uh, we don't have that kind of power realistically. Digging into comments here. Norma says, hey, guys, saying it over and over. Uh, runs win the ring let's go uh so does good defense and good pitching so hopefully we can get the runs maybe i don't know if they got taco bell out there in the bubble but hey there was a little bit of a uh, doug line for you a little bit just a little bit of one <laughs> uh we have uh lament slider noted padres fan and noted friend of the show surprisingly in the chat again it's good to see you in there over on youtube he says can we talk about pollock and muncie on defense he also says uh, earlier in the chat, you can bloop a lot of hits with Pollock in left field, and that's true. And that's the weakness that I see in this defensive alignment, that Pollock is not as fast or not yeah. not as good on defense as you would like in this big of a field. And the Padres could absolutely take advantage of that. So yeah. I do worry about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I honestly thought they were going to go the other route, maybe throw Kike at second base, Taylor in the outfield, have Pollock at DH. I think uh, he's going to get you a, a better quality at bat over jock jock has barely you know faced live in-game hitter or pitchers over the last you know few weeks while he's dealt with some family issues and all that so having him come I in do. against clevenger eh. mm -hmm. 
I think on in the other sense, though, I think Doc is really relying on the offensive output that Pollock has put in at DH versus outfield. As a DH, he has not put up any numbers. Uh, if you look at the splits when he's starting as a designated hitter versus starting in the outfield, it's like night and day. He's tearing the cover off the ball when he's playing the outfield and hitting. But when he's DHing, I don't know if that time sitting is hurting him because if you go from a role where you're always playing outfield and always active and always moving around and then you're sitting on the bench between the bats, it's not for everybody. Not yeah. everybody's good at it. That's why it's very specific to one body type, usually. Uh, but and low. You know, the numbers don't lie. The numbers <laughs> don't lie. So maybe Doc's just playing that strength and, and hoping that he's not too much of a defensive liability out there. He can be really good. He can be really good. I will say that. Yeah, for sure. Will says, and we, we want that piece of metal. Hell yeah, bring it home. Or uh, Rob saying classic Dave on the lineup decisions and just the way it goes. Uh, we got people arguing AJ should be the DH, put Jock in left. Uh, I feel less, co- even less confident about Jock in the outfield right now than I do about him batting. So that's the thing. Nina's aboard the CT3 train. going to have a good series, you'd hope. You really want that, especially if he's going to be, you know, kind of setting the table in that bottom half of it, that bottom third of the lineup. Uh, that would be right. that would be pretty nice. Uh, King Yellowman wants Fresh Prince to be cleaning up. Um, as much as we get, kind of gave it hell early on in the season with the, uh, you know, the left right left right lineup. I, I I think it kind of plays up nicely right now. I wouldn't mind, you know, keeping that space. Maybe just maybe just uh, you know, flip Bellinger, flip Muncie, see what happens. But just do it. Just do the thing. <laughs> just just play around with it and see what happens. Well, my fighter <laughs> also says no fans in the stadium. It's for the NLCS. Yeah. So this this playoffs you're only going to have fans for the championship series and the world series so no division series fans it's just families i think are in there yeah this this round is that it families and and still got the uh the booth noise and and apparently you know they they are trying to have it as close to what the dodgers would be doing at dodger stadium so um yeah <laughs> interesting yes thank you back to you in the studio <laughs> <laughs> uh, Julio's a little uh, a little nervous about the series, especially since it's going best of five with Kershaw going in game two. We'll dig more into Kershaw tomorrow, which is his start. Uh, I feel pretty confident about Kersh this time through. Uh, I think he gets it. I think he finally gets it. The same way he talked about Kenley, uh, him you know it being brought up today. Um, I think it was Dave S.A. asked him like you know you've known Kenley for this long. You guys have been teammate chasing this this ring. How does he feel about not having maybe necessarily getting that ninth inning uh, in a safe situation. And he's like, I think at this point he just wants to win. He'll do whatever it takes for the team, which is kind of a concession on his part in a way, on, on uh, Kenley's part. But I guess we can go with again. It is what it is. I saw uh, somewhere in the chat, I don't remember where it was, but somebody brought up the umpiring crew for the series. How are you feeling about Lance Barrett calling balls and strikes tonight? Uh, I think it's. I think you even said it on Twitter. It's going to be huge for Clevenger coming off of you know so long between in-game action, real game action. Uh, we can say Barrett has a wide strike zone. He's very pitcher friendly and, and yep. erratic. So I I don't like any. I don't think I like half of this umpire crew, umpiring crew, if not more than half of it. It's not a very good crew, but uh, for to have somebody like like Lance Barrett to be the guy to set the tone in the first game, um, it's a no for me, dog. Yeah, the bummer was that I really like Lance Barrett <laughs> matching up with Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> that's the that's the yeah. matchup that I would have preferred to see over Walker Buehler. I just feel like Clevenger stuff plays in the favor of how Barrett calls balls and strikes. Mm-hmm. And I really think you're going to see that tonight. And it's going to be super frustrating. But, I mean, it's he's going to be consistently bad. So at least there's that. You can rely on that. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Rojas on uh, on Periscope asks, uh, will we see Lux, uh, will we get a Lux appearance at any point in the series or at any point? I don't know if it's tonight or in the series. I'm going to rephrase it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go with who gets more face time in the series, Lux or, or Terrence Gore? There's your, there's your big, oh. your big one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, whew, I think because of the versatility that CT offers you defensively, you're going to see more of Gavin Lux, and it's mostly going to be defensive and maybe one or two at bats. He's not going to get a ton of at bats, but you're mm-hmm. going to see him as a defensive replacement late in games. So 
Chris Taylor can move around to the outfield as needed. Like I said, fill in for Pollock. I'm going. I'm going Gavin Lux more than than Gore. I think. I think we'll see probably very little of Gore. Probably. Yeah, if he's in there, you hopefully he uh, he's scoring a run. He's doing a little Dave Roberts magic, stealing a base when everybody knows he's going to be stealing a base. That would be uh, that would be nice. Uh, Norma asked something from Dodgers Beat because they're uh, they're posting some things over on Twitter. Uh, is this Dodgers Padres thing? Is this a rivalry? We know it's not, but I want I want to hear you. Uh, I want to hear you shred it. <laughs> one, one more time. What'd you say? I could hear. Uh, you. Is is this a rivalry? This uh. Because they're, oh. they're trying to make it a rivalry. Well, I mean, I talked about it a little bit. I think Dave had said, like, there's kind of got to be more history there for it to be a rivalry. Um, I think for these younger guys, you know, I think about guys like Will Smith. If you've been here since 2019, all you've known from the Padres is that they are a good team who can mm-hmm. compete. If you've been here longer, if you're somebody like Clayton Kershaw, in his mind, he's probably like, we haven't heard from him on it, but he's probably like, no, this isn't a rivalry. They've been bad since I was here. <laughs> now all of a sudden they're good and it's a rivalry. That's not how that works. But, you know, you look at it and you, you look at how the year's gone and how things have built up and all of it leading to this series. It has the makings of a rivalry. Yeah. I think that the Padres are going to be good. I think that's the biggest difference. You know, the Diamondbacks tried to make things a rivalry, but you knew that their window was very tight and mm-hmm. that things weren't going to last very long. And they did it, and that's really clear and obvious now. But you look at the Padres, they're good. They're trash-talking. They can be good for much longer than just this year. So I think it has the makings of a rivalry. I wouldn't call it that quite yet, but, I mean, ask me again after this series. We'll see how it goes. Best way to wrap it up right there, saying after the series, that's when we're we're definitely going to know. When I say wrap it up, I'm at that point. We'll, we'll go a couple more minutes before we let you go watch the game. Uh, I wanted to throw up the, the San Diego Padres lineup. Uh, no real, no real magic. Nothing uh, uh, stood out in the part of their lineup. It's the usual suspect: Grisham at the top, Tatis Jr., Machado, Hosmer. You got you got Fam in the outfield. Will Myers, Cronenworth, Nola, and Profar. Uh, does anything scare you from that lineup for Walker Bueller, who hasn't been great against them uh, this season? Uh, nothing in particular scares me, or seems out of the blue for me or anything like that. I do think that the more challenging part of the lineup, surprisingly for me, is going to be between Hosmer and Pham. I just feel like Hosmer is going to is going to be all over Walker's fastballs tonight, and I think it's going to play up for him in, in this ballpark. I do think that Tommy Pham is just a different animal in the playoffs, and that's pretty much the only reason the Padres got him in the first place is because he's been an animal in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and I, he's been there before, and he understands it. So he's a guy that if I look at this entire lineup, he's actually a guy that I'm more worried about than anybody. And that's really saying something when you have a lineup of Tatis and Hosmer and Machado. So watch out for that guy. Not to mention the fact that you've got Cronenworth batting so, batting so far down in the lineup. Yeah. And, I mean, that kid is a freak. He's just so good. Yeah, there's a couple of well-balanced lineups between both clubs. Uh, we know Profar can do some things with his feet, with the wheels. Uh, Nola's, Nola's mm-hmm. kind of a less-known commodity. So it'll be fun. This game will be fun. We're going to learn a lot, and we'll, we'll, we'll pick up some more uh, on it for tomorrow's pregame show. Uh, Doug will be going live for the postgame show after today or after tonight's game. After a Bueller win, we hope we knock on wood for that. Uh, quickly, a couple of the, the, uh, the comments, uh, or the, the pre- what do they call those? What do we call them? Predictions? Thoughts and predictions on this. Uh, well, I guess the Rays just went up 3-1 in their game. Uh, Norma says 5-2 prediction for tonight's game. Uh, what, what do you got for, for uh, tonight's final? For tonight's final? Yeah. Uh, oof, man. I'm going to go 5-4 ball game. I think it's going to be a tight one. Hmm. I'm assuming the good guys win? I, I, I have to say good guys. I can't go game one and say the Dodgers are going to lose. That's fair. Uh, I, I, what did I say last night? I said uh, it's going to be a four-game series. Dodgers are going to win 3-1. They lose the third game, probably going to be uh, that that uh, uh, Gonsolin start. Nina says Dodgers in four. Danny says Dodgers in three, giving it the uh, giving it the sweep of Rooney. Uh, going back a little bit here, Jose says uh, Dodgers in three. If they go up 2-0, uh, they will have they will unload the bullpen and close it out. Can you go up 3-0, or you win it in 3-0? Uh, you can kind of just you have a few days off. You can make. You know, let let the bullpen rest up. Throw everything you have at them. Might as well. Let's hope. Let's hope we can get it tonight. Um, I think that's good. I think we're good. 
Uh, everything's set up right now on the on the Lakers court. So uh, I guess it's about time to sign off, huh? It's a good time to sign off. Go Lakers. <laughs> uh, we got we got. Oh wait, douche, douchebug says thirteen two Dodgers. I'm gonna go with that one. That's our final thought. All right, guys. Well, again, Ooh. stay after the game. The same spot you're watching this, you'll be able to find Doug McCain on DN Post Game Show. You'll be able to hear that show. That's a that's a also a podcast. Dodgers dugout. D O U G. O-U-T. Find more of our stuff. We are on the internet, DodgersNation.com. There's so much stuff there. Uh, we're, our, our brains hurt. Blue Heaven Podcast, we are a podcast. We do more of this, and we drink a lot more, and we do it. iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Pandora, Alexa, and uh, so many more. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash DodgersNationTV. That guy over there is Brooke. I am Clint. Uh, he's Brooke Me 3 I am Real FRG. Peace. Late. Bye. <laughs>